guys, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to continue talking about sunscreens. I already did a video on my favorite Korean sunscreens out there. Now I wanna talk about sunscreens that are a little more widely available here in the US. I wanted to continue talking about sunscreens because I wanna give you guys lots of different options. We know that sunscreen is one of the most important, if not the most important product in your skincare routine during the daytime. Even on cloudy days, you have to wear sunscreen because UV rays can cause premature aging. It can also cause skin cancer, which is one of the most prevalent cancers out there actually. So I wanted to give you more options because I already touched on the Korean sunscreens. Now I wanna get into other sunscreens that you find more widely here in the US and in other places too. I'm gonna start with mineral sunscreens because I probably get the most questions about mineral sunscreens and that's because it's hard to find really nice mineral sunscreens. These are the physical sunscreens, the ones with zinc oxide or with titanium dioxide. What happens is it can feel really thick and pasty and leave a white cast, a really thick white cast on your skin. But I know that a lot of people are very interested in mineral sunscreens because they're worried about what they hear about sunscreen getting into your bloodstream, even though we don't know if it's bad for you or not. And they're also worried about the coral reefs. Again, we don't know how huge the impact is, but I know some people are very aware of that. So I'm gonna start with the mineral sunscreens. The first one is by Dermalogica. This is their Invisible Physical Defense. It's an SPF 30 and it's made with non-nano zinc oxide. From what I know about non-nano zinc oxide is that it doesn't penetrate your skin too deeply and so it doesn't irritate your skin. I'm not very clear on the differences because I've used other zinc oxide sunscreens and they've never irritated my skin. So I think this is something that's starting to come out as another like buzzword or like term that they use for the ingredients. So it does, if that matters to you, it has non-nano zinc oxide. It also has mushroom extracts that help to really protect your skin and soothe your skin. It also has green tea extract as well. It also helps to soothe your skin. It's an antioxidant and it also just makes it feel really nice. I think one of the big things about sunscreen is that you want sunscreen that feels like it's part of your skincare routine, and this one does. The best part about this is that it really looks good on every skin tone. I tried this on my husband, it didn't leave a white cast on him. It absorbs really nicely. You can put a lot on and it's going to look good on your skin and it won't feel really thick and matte or shiny or oily. It won't feel like that. It feels like you're just putting on a really nice sunscreen. It's not as thin as like a serum type sunscreen, but it's not gonna leave that thick pastiness on you. One thing I will point out though, that I dislike about this is that it is $54 for a 1.7 US fluid ounce tube. I guess uh, finding a mineral sunscreen that's not gonna leave a white cast comes at a premium right now. $54 is a lot to me for a sunscreen, but hopefully this will last me for a little while. Next up is this one by Ren. I've actually been using this for a very long time. It was the only sunscreen I was using last summer. This is the Ren Clean Screen Mineral SPF 30 sunscreen. This one is mattifying. So if you want a sunscreen that actually will mattify your skin and look really nice underneath your makeup, I think this one is a great one for that. I think it leaves a little bit of a white cast, but it tends to go away over time. So I don't find it to be a big problem. I throw this one in my bag all the time too, because the tube is really nice. It's 22% zinc oxide. It's also broad spectrum. This one also is a non-nano zinc oxide. Again, if you're looking for that, great. If not, it does have it. It's just really nice, in my opinion. It feels really good on your skin. I think it has a very similar texture to the Dermalogica, but like I said, this one is mattifying. It has rice starch in it, actually, to help absorb oil in your skin, so it's not something like silicone that's absorbing the oils, which I tend to find in a lot of the like oil-absorbing or mattifying kind of products. It feels really nice and light on the skin, and it's also only $34, so if price is a big deal to you, then this one is a better price than the Dermalogica, but I will say, if the texture matters to you, this one is just a touch thicker than the Dermalogica. Next up is this one. It is by Flesh. I only just started using this and I love it, you guys, because it feels like a serum. That is a big deal to me. I don't like my sunscreens to feel very heavy. I like them to feel like they're part of my skincare routine and I really do think that Flesh did a good job with this one. It feels nice and light. It's hydrating. It has very nice hydrating ingredients in it too. It's broad spectrum. It's SPF 35. It is chemical sunscreens that it has in it, but the chemical sunscreens are ones that are approved by Anna on my team. That's who I always actually refer to. She's a big stickler about not using chemical sunscreens that can affect the coral reef, no matter how much information we have on it yet. 
she's a big stickler on it. So this one is actually approved by Anna on our team. But like I said, this one just feels like it's a very nice hydrating serum and that's what I really like about it. I feel like a lot of sunscreens on the market need to go that direction where they start to feel like they're part of your skincare routine because I really do think that it's going to encourage more people to use sunscreen daily. That way it doesn't feel like it's messing with their skin. People don't wanna look like they're wearing sunscreen. They don't want it to mess up their makeup. They don't want it to make their makeup slide around or get really gross and tacky. You just wanna look like you never applied anything and this one really feels that way. I will also say that I think that chemical sunscreens tend to be the ones that work well in skincare formulations. They tend to do better with your makeup and they tend to not leave a white cast as much. So this one is one of those. It looks really nice on your skin. It almost makes your skin look glowy in my opinion, like it's dewiness to it and it feels really nice. Speaking of sunscreen as skincare, there is this one. It's the Super Screen by Super Goop. This is a daily moisturizer, so it's not actually a sunscreen, though I have to throw it out there, you guys. Most sunscreens are actually moisturizers too. It's really dependent on how they feel on your skin. This is, though, more of your typical kind of moisturizer. It's SPF 40, PA++++, which means that it's also broad spectrum. This is a favorite by Anna on our team. I actually had to steal this from her because she was about to finish it. If you guys take a look, look at that. She was about to be done with it. So I told her I wanted to tell everybody about this. It does have chemical sunscreens in this, but they are, again, and approved. The big question when it comes to SPF in your moisturizer or in your makeup is whether you're actually going to cover your skin enough because you have to use a lot more sunscreen than you would most of the time with moisturizer. So unless you have really dry skin, you're probably not slathering thick layers of your moisturizer on. So that's just something to keep in mind. But again, if you are one of those people that just refuses to use a separate sunscreen, then this is the way to go. And I really like the way that this one feels. And then last, people are always asking me how I reapply my sunscreen because you do have to reapply your sunscreen every two hours or so. I like to use setting sprays the most. These are by Supergoop and by Kula. This one feels a little bit lighter to me, which is why I tend to go for this one a lot more. Nikki, my makeup artist, also really loves this one. She goes through it so quickly. This one is SPF 30 and this one is SPF 40, but the two biggest differences I would say is this one feels a lot lighter on the skin and this one feels a little bit heavier. And when I say heavier, it's not heavy at all, but I have noticed that people have commented before saying that this sometimes leaves a little greasiness in the hair, and this one does not. So those are just things to keep in mind, but this one is also SPF 40, so it feels a little bit more like a true sunscreen, whereas this one feels a little bit more like a makeup setting spray. So those are some of the sunscreens that I am loving right now, obviously. This one is one that Anna from my team is loving right now, but she always recommends it. And whenever I give it to people or I tell people to use that one, they really love it a lot. I have never heard anything bad about it, actually. There are so many sunscreens on the market these days. I feel like I could do a whole other video just talking about just the sunscreens that I really like. These just happen to be the ones I've been using lately, and I just highly suggest them. One thing I do want to point out is there is a little bit of fragrance, a type of fragrance in all of these products. I wasn't looking specifically for fragrance-free sunscreens, and I did mention one in our Korean sunscreens video that is fragrance free, but these are not fragrance free. Some of them will say that there's no synthetic fragrance, but there happens to be some type of a fragrance. So that's just something to keep in mind. None of them have this overwhelming scent to me. I actually don't even notice the fragrance in any of them, but I do always want to point it out to people that are sensitive to it. Another thing I want to point out, I've had messages from people saying that they're worried about potentially getting something like cancer from chemical sunscreens or certain ingredients that they find in sunscreens. And I always tell them that I would be more concerned with getting skin cancer. I've never actually heard of anybody getting cancer from their sunscreen, but I have heard of people getting lots of skin cancer from not wearing their sunscreen. So that's actually one of the bigger, more important things to worry about when it comes to sunscreen. Wear your sunscreen. It's really important, not just because of vanity reasons, but because it actually does protect your skin, especially if you start to introduce all these actives into your skin, you really do need to protect it. I hope this information was helpful. Let me know in the comments below what sunscreens you're using or if you are going to try any of these. You can find me in our private Facebook group and I'm also on Instagram at Susan Yara. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.